Number two, the battle between righteousness and unrighteousness. The battle between righteousness and unrighteousness. You want to interact with God? The premise of interaction is on the plane of righteousness. Because the very foundation of his throne exists on what? On righteousness and justice. Before you can be qualified to receive of the realities of God and bring witness of his reality in time, you must meet the demand of righteousness. And that is why it becomes a warfare. The Bible said that thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is what? Is the right scepter. It said, because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness, God, even God, have what? Have anointed thy head with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. The system of the world is designed to make you become wicked. It is designed, fabricated deliberately to squeeze out wickedness out of you. So you will show someone good. You will do them good. You will be nice to them. You will watch their estate. You are interested in their well-being. But what they are thinking of doing or getting from you is to maltreat you. Looking for your downfall at any cost. Right now, if somebody is trying, like sometimes I'm driving, I see people that I want to pick. What I will remember. My wife always caution me, don't pick anybody. Don't give anybody look. Because you don't know, by trying to be good, you will receive back what? Wickedness. And because of that, naturally, everyone gravitates towards self-preservation. One of the battles of the last days is the battle of being or sustaining the demand for righteousness as a case of righteousness. It's a war between light and darkness. It's a contention between the sons of light and the sons of darkness. Because the God that we serve, his standard is established in righteousness. And if you don't subscribe to the protocol of righteousness, you cannot command the hand of God. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and in verse 2, the Bible says it is an abomination to kings to do what? To do wickedness. To commit wickedness. For the throne is established in righteousness. This is what the devil understands. There is no throne that is established in iniquity. Such throne will never bring out anything good for the people. The throne is established in righteousness. For you to sit in the affairs of power and legislate over people, you must meet the demand of righteousness. And that is why the devil does everything within his capacity to corrupt the men that want to ascend to the throne. He said it is an abomination for kings to what? To do wickedness. If you are a king and you are in wickedness, it means you are abusing the power of your throne. You are abusing and misusing the powers of your throne. If you subscribe to the provisions of unrighteousness, you are making yourself powerless before the immortals. Have you not read? It say he has made us what? Kings and priests. Unto our God and we shall what? Reign in the earth. So what the devil is trying to achieve is to corrupt your throne. By the art of your own will, you engage in unrighteousness. And thereby, you fail to wield the power of your throne. 
This is why kings make decrees and it cannot stand because the foundation of their throne has been violated by the act of iniquity and unrighteousness. Every day you are standing and praying, commanding and decreeing, and there is no establishment. It is because when you are vetted, you don't meet the demand of righteousness. He says an abomination for kings to commit wickedness because the foundation of the throne that you are seated is established in righteousness. Mm. Messianos, Granas, Senaco, Suli, Yeti Gazura, Camosila, Gonia die. Whenever you see yourself in between two opinions, two options, and one is suggesting the act of righteousness, and the other is suggesting you to compromise. Know that the power of your throne is under contention. And if you want to be a powerful king, you must what? Discipline yourself and pay the price of sustaining relevance in righteousness. Because that is where when you stand and you make a decree as a king, your word will be upheld. The Bible says where the word of the king is, there is what? There is power. Wherever the word of the king is, there is what? Power. The desire of God is that as you stand to make a decree from the throne that you are seated in the spirit, the angels will upheld it. But when that utterance, that decree is coming from a few team out, a compromised heart, there is no way that decree can pierce the roof into the spirit realm. It will bounce back to you. Because you have not subscribed to the principle and the protocol of righteousness. The standards of God are high. In the book of Psalm 71 verse 19, the Bible says that righteousness also, O God, is very high. Who has done great things, O God, who is like unto thee? If it is God you want to align with, you must pay the price contend with the force of unrighteousness that seek to engulf your heart, that seek to bring you into realm of compromise and stand, take a stand with righteousness so that when the time come and you stand like a king and you make a decree your word will be upheld. The Bible spoke concerning Samuel that all the days of his life God did not allow any of his world to fall to the ground and we saw that when Samuel began to ask the children of Israel, he said, have I defrauded any of you? Have I taken anything that was not given to me? Have I misused my opportunity and my power and my office and used it to, to enrich myself in any way? And the answer came, no. This was why none of his word fell to the ground. The next time you want to compromise, know that you are just weakening your throne. It's an attack of the enemy to make you fall into unrighteousness so that your throne will become weak. The Bible says it is an abomination. It's a violation of kingship for a king to do wickedness. Because the very throne is established in righteousness. If you are still here, you shout, Amen. Amen. 